Hello and welcome to this lecture on chemical process modeling and simulation. Um, in this lecture, we are going to try and define the different kinds of variables that uh, characterize the input output streams the uh, units and various processes that take place in the units. As uh, we have seen in the previous uh, lectures, uh, mathematical modeling of a chemical process is an approximate mathematical representation of the uh, various processes, often competing processes that um, occur in, um, in a unit, a single unit or a set of units, which together constitute a system. And we are going to try and define all the relevant variables that characterize this whole system. So what are the three types of variables? Stream variables, unit variables, and process variables. And the block diagram we see again. So the stream variables are that of input streams or output streams. And then we have the unit and process variables. And the mathematical model per se is the set of constraints or equations that we have on these variables. What are the stream variables? Right? Each input or output stream is characterized by three things. One is the composition. What is that stream comprised of and how much of each of it is there? So what are the various species that are present and what is the composition of the stream? In other words, what is the concentration or the amounts of each of those species? The second thing is flow rate. How fast is the stream flowing into or out of the system? And third thing is under what conditions? Temperature, pressure, etc. Right? So these together form the stream variables. Oftentimes what you do is you measure these variables. In a chemical process, in a chemical uh, industry, you have a variety of sensors that measure flow rate, then measure compositions, that measure temperature, then measure pressure. Right? And this is, is critical to understanding how the system, any system behaves. Now, what are the unit variables? How is the unit characterized? What is this unit made of? Material of construction. I will be upfront with you. Almost none of this course will be uh, concerned about much about the material of construction though we will of course define in every instance the material of construction by way of a variety of properties for instance we were talking about in the previous lectures um, thermal conductivity or um, the density or uh, you know various various properties all right but uh, the design part of uh, the material of construction would not be a focus of this course. Uh, the second one would be a focus of this course. The unit variable is characterized by the capacity or size. How big is this unit? So we are talking about capacity in terms of volume or area or length or thickness depending on the nature of the unit. We will see some examples in these subsequent slides. Geometry, what shape is this unit? Is this uh, unit a cylindrical shaped uh, unit or a cube, cube uh, or a cuboidal unit? Flat geometry, curved geometry, straight geometry, inclined geometry, and so on and so forth. So this is usually designed, and uh, you know, um, usually this this particular geometry is is not uh, an outcome of any calculation, any model equation. Though the sh shape is going to decide what kind of unit variables go into the model, all right, uh, you, you generally don't have a model that tells you, okay, your heat exchanger has to kind of comprise, comprise cylindrical tubes, all right, uh, annular uh, structure of cylindrical tubes um, versus um, annular spheres, for example. There is no model that does that. You have to predefine the geometry and your model gets developed accordingly. Then you may com compare one geometry versus other geometry, which is a better geometry and so on. So, forth, right. So um, typically, therefore, when you are looking at the unit variables, the, the unit variable that you design for usually is the capacity. 
process variables so how is a process characterized any process is characterized by the following variables what is the driving force for the process in other words why does the process take place in that unit in the first place there ought to be some driving force that drives that causes this process to take place and what is the driving force and then you have the rate of that process and the resistance offered by the system to that process unless you have a quantum process there is always this relationship between these three things rate is equal to driving force by resistance okay i is equal to v by r the simplest example that you can think of is the ohm's law i being the current is the rate of transport of charges per unit second so coulomb per second is ampere that is current voltage across the the, the difference of, of electric potential across two ends through which current is flowing is the driving force and r is the resistance offered by that that system to the flow of passage of current so these three are very crucial to defining a process then under what conditions what are the temperature pressure conditions and the the last but definitely not the least is how long is this process taking place what is the residence time for example at least the average or mean residence time right for a batch process you have a batch time instead of residence time so all of these are are crucial to defining the process variables now this is a general uh, thing that to, to keep in mind if you have a single homogeneous stream meaning a single phase stream you don't have more than one phase then following are the relevant stream variables if you have c components you need to define c minus 1 compositions or you can define the c compositions and write one additional equation saying that sum of all the um, mole fraction will be 1 or sum of all the mass fraction will be 1 or sum of all the moles uh, con the concentrations will be the total concentration or sum of all the moles of each species will be the total number of moles right in the system in the stream so um, i have assumed that you know you have incorporated the the quote unquote equation which is actually a constraint that sigma x is equal to 1 or sigma y is equal to 1 sum of all the mole fractions is 1 and therefore you specify only the c minus 1 um, composition the c composition is obtained by that equation so c minus 1 compositions one temperature one pressure and one flow rate which you have to specify for each homogeneous stream for us therefore for a single homogeneous stream you will need c plus two variables stream variables now suppose you have a two phase stream suppose you have a mixture of vapor and liquid that is flowing in a pipe for example stream right and assuming that the vapor and liquid are in equilibrium then you still need to define only one temperature one pressure you will have to specify either a total flow rate and a fraction of vapor or you will have to specify one vapor flow rate one liquid flow rate so temperature pressure will still be one but flow rate will effectively become two and you will need two into c minus one compositions one set for vapor phase one set for liquid phase okay unless you specify one of this uh, um, the compositions and then you write the uh, c minus one equilibrium relations that sort of relate using which you can cap calculate the other phase compositions so basically you this this is for a single homogeneous stream c plus two is for a homogeneous stream the moment you have heterogeneity in the stream you will start seeing additional variables that will have to be specified this is just one example now um, over this next couple of slides this slide and the next slide um, so you know we were talking about uh, some mixer some splitter and and whatnot mixer we started uh, looking at in the very first lecture when we took took up the case study right now um, you know you can try and define how many streams are going into a unit and how many stream variables are needed okay i am giving not the streams you notice i am giving a unit i am giving a total reboiler partial condenser a simple equilibrium stage a 
an equilibrium stage in the crude distillation unit model for which you have to see that uh, the, the set of equations that were put up in the introduction to mathematical modeling and introduction to modeling uh, slides uh, lectures okay a pump for example a gravity decanter and so on so forth so in all, each of this system you have to ask yourself how many streams are coming in how many streams are going out so you define the uh, remember the the block, block diagram right so define how many streams are there and for each stream you look at what are all the variables in there okay the same set of uh, units will be repeated for unit variables and process variables uh, forthcoming uh, slides so when we talked about material of construction standard choices depending on the nature and the composition of streams this we are not going to focus so much except we will use the properties when we are uh, as parameters when we are solving various models geometry again standard set of choices um, you know cartesian coordinate based uh, meaning basically you have which can be used to describe planar uh, uh, rectangular or square or a cube cuboidal kind of systems or you have a cylindrical system you have a spherical system and various other geometries elliptical cross section triangular cross section and so on so, forth. so depending on that geometries may vary capacity again what you usually design design is for minimum capacity so when you are asked for example tell me what should be the volume of a csdr um, given a reaction uh, occurring at this temperature given the input concentration of this the feed uh, at uh, and flow rate okay i must have a conversion of say 95 percent of some defined value what should be my volume of a csdr so this is a design problem you remember we are talking about the unit variable being calculated here right and that volume is the minimum capacity that you will ensure of course you will have extra space when you actually build the uh, the reactor right and some problems you will assume that the unit has this capacity suppose i'm going to ask what if my um, capacity is increased by 40 percent or 20 percent i'm going to assume that i should be able to do that in the unit that is actually there in the industry that things are not going to overflow right so uh, capacity you, you you have usually this sort of a minimum capacity that you keep in okay so in mathematical models of interest to this course, as I was saying, materials of construction geometry shall not be considered. They will be treated as knowns. So this leaves only the variables indicating capacity. Now, please, uh, can you think of what is the capacity for a condenser, partial condenser? A condenser is typically some form of a heat exchanger. What is the variable that indicates the capacity? Um, what about uh, capacity of a pump? What about the capacity of a filter press? What about the capacity of a ball, ball mill? Um, we will come to car parked on an open parking spot uh, when we discuss the process. Why I put that example there. Capacity of a PFR. All right, with that reaction. So what are the relevant unit variables? Again, Process variables, you recall um, the driving force, rate, resistance, the conditions of operation, temperature pressure conditions, and the residence time for each of this. Define, define for each of these. Now we will talk about the car part or an open parking spot. And this is a problem that uh, is a very interesting problem that I saw when I was doing my master's. This problem was given to me. Here is a car that is parked in an open parking spot where there are no uh, shades and tree shadows and whatnot. Okay. And um, it is left for a certain period of time. So uh, the ambient temperature pressure is known and inside you, uh, the car is not running and therefore the, uh, there is a fixed amount of air that is inside the, the car. All right. Um, there is uh, radiation happening between the, the inside of the car and the outside of the car. The car acts as some sort of a radiating body. And there is uh, conduction happening through 
the uh, um, the metal and the glass um, um, you know windows and the uh, you know windshield and all that right um, and there is uh, there is of course also uh, the natural circulation uh, convection that is uh, circulation of air that is set up inside the the car because of the temperature difference that exist in the car so so here is a process which uh, which has you know there is a wind blowing outside there is forced convection there is air that is uh, circulating inside in natural convection there is convection across the the solid that is the the walls of the car and then there is radiation all right so all processes are there we, we were asked to develop a model Okay, so uh, here is that's a very interesting um, example actually. So, what are the relevant process variables? What are the relevant unit variables? What are the relevant stream variables? So, to just think about those, you can list the total number of variables then. So, by doing this, you have the first step of the modeling recipe completed. Then, you have to start writing the various equations and then you have to do a degree of freedom analysis and then you specify the various parameters that need to be specified and then you go ahead and solve the um, resultant set of equations either by analytical solution by hand or on a computer so that will be your simulation so this is again the same list of uh, you know um, units that are that are presented here and this is by no means an exhaustive uh, set of units these are just given for you to ponder over a variety of uh, you know different types of units are given for you to think about how uh, this this kind of modeling can take place and these are all units that you've studied in your chemical engineering courses earlier so this none of them is really new for you so once again thank you um for uh, listening to this lecture if you have any questions please feel free to leave them at the comment section and um, i will be very happy to address those questions have a wonderful day thank you very much